Hey guys, my name is Aaron and the top to my Porsche Boxster 986 just stopped working. I don't know what's wrong with it yet. I'm gonna troubleshoot it just like you would. So hopefully by the end of this video, I figure it out and possibly help you figure yours out. I assume that's why you're here. Otherwise you are a loyal subscriber that just enjoys my channel content and you guys are the best. Thank you so much for that. If you fall into the first group, please go ahead and subscribe and like this video and then you can follow all the cool content on the channel. So first thing, let me just show you the problem that I'm having. Okay, I am in my Boxster. The top is open. That's the position it was in when I started having this problem. So normally to open the top, you are going to at least turn on your ignition. Then you are going to open this and you'll see the windows will roll down. And of course you have to be sure that the handbrake is on unless you have a special mod for that, but that's a different topic. Then you should just be able to hold down the open button. But as you can see, when I press that, nothing happens. So I have tried to open and close this several times and still get the same thing. So we're going to start troubleshooting. Oh yeah. Note the mileage. Okay. So one of the very common issues I have read is that your car does not realize that the parking brake is actually on. And the easy way to see if that is the case is to look here at the parking light and then lower your brake and raise it. And if that light goes on and off, that is not the problem. If that light does not go on and off behind this panel here and under there is a little switch that has a plunger on it. Here's a picture of what that switch looks like and it actually gets plunged when you raise it and lowered when the handle comes down. So if your light is not going on and off, stop here and check out this link in the corner. I have another video that shows you how to remove the center console and you're gonna need to do that to be able to get to that switch. It's a really cheap part. You can buy it. I'll put a link to that switch if I can find it in my description. So just order one, replace it, and your top will probably work. But if this light is working for you and you have to continue troubleshooting, I have heard that there are two switches up in here and one of them lowers the windows and the other one is the signal for the top to be able to go down. So I've heard, I can hear a couple of switches. I don't know if you can hear that, but at one detent I can hear one and then Further, I can hear a second one. So they say to mess around with that, try it, still no such luck. So that micro switch up there might be the problem for me. Another somewhat common cause is a relay that is down here. So if you look under past your fuse box down there, you can see your relays. And the largest relay is the one that controls the top. So I read online that you can pull that thing out and put it back in. Sometimes that helps fix it. Or if you have another one from a car that you know is working, you can swap them to see if that makes a difference. So I guess I'm going to pull this out. All right, never pulled this out before, but it sticks out a lot, so it's easy to grab. It sticks out a lot, so it's easy to grab at least. Pretty stubborn. I think maybe it's coming. I can't tell. Ah, there we go. Okay, so here's our relay. All right, so for mine, the part with all the wording went on top, the dusty part, just so I remember that. And Here's all of our contacts. Let's see, what's this thing say? Probably in German, one of these say the top, I don't know. But uh, I don't hear anything loose when I shake it. Now, once you have this relay out, they actually say to whack it on something hard, kind of like uh, you would do with a pack of cigarettes back in the old day, but not on your hand, on something hard. And that can loosen up any corrosion inside that has built up. 
Yeah, that should be enough. Oh, they also say to look for a black dot that is on here, which I do not have a black dot. So I think that means this is the older version. That's where it came out of. Everything looks normal, I guess. I don't know what normal looks like. All right, rustled that thing back in. All right, so let's give it another shot. My latch is still open. And it did not help. I also just want to note when I am pressing this button, you do not hear any gears trying to turn or anything like that. So it makes me believe it's not a gear related issue or a motor for the top related issue. Just did some research on the fuse panel down here and it turns out that there are two fuses that we need to be concerned with. Look at our little booklet here. And in the English section, B6 says that it is for the direction indicator lights and power windows, but online it says that this fuse is also what supplies power to the relay that we just checked. And D3 is what actually allows power to go to the motor. So we need to check both of these fuses. So with my little fuse puller, the rows are A, B, C, D, E, F. So I'm going to start with A, B, then one, two, three, four, five, six, over. I'm going to pull this one out. And that one is actually fine. But they did say online that sometimes the contacts can have a little corrosion on them over the years. So it doesn't hurt to slide it in and out a few times just to make sure that the corrosion is removed. So A, B, C, D, one, two, three. That's this guy. And that tab in the middle is still intact, so this fuse looks fine as well. But I'm just gonna put it in and out a few times. Scrape off any possible corrosion on there. And we'll put this back, put the cover back on. And still nothing. So possible problem could be the switch itself. So just to double check this connection, you can actually pull this piece off. If I have a trim tool, it would be a little easier, but this will come right off. And I just want to make sure that this pink switch has a good contact. So I'm gonna unplug that and plug it back in. All right, I just tried that again, and uh, it still did not work. So it does not eliminate the switch from being the problem, but the connection seems to be fine. So, so far, kind of at a loss. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards it possibly being the relay because it sounds like they go bad sometimes, and I have an original one with almost 70,000 miles. So I think I'm going to take a trip up to the dealership and pick up a new relay and test out a different relay, see if that's what the problem is. All right, let's see, another troubleshooting step that I just thought of is that all of these buttons should actually be identical in working. So I figured maybe I would take one that I know is working and swap it here real quick, just to see if that matters. The one that goes to my top and moved it up to the green one. And I can confirm that that does not help, so that can eliminate the switch from being the problem. All right, this is fantastic. A buddy of mine just sent me this PDF with some micro switch troubleshooting tips. And uh, it's a PDF, so I printed it off so I can try to share it with you here. So right here is where this uh, double relay goes. And once you pull it off, this is not Took me a while to figure this out. This is not a picture of the back of the relay. This is a picture of the empty um, spaces right here where the relay plugs into. So this numbering, if you look at the back of your relay, will match up for when you plug it in this way. And these tell you what all of these slots are for. But the cool page is right here. 
So it tells you to remove the relay and then you can take a voltmeter and you can test all of these different combinations. So for example, for the first combination, you're putting the ground end of the voltmeter to terminal 22 and the positive to 23. And your voltmeter should read whatever the battery voltage is, which would be 12 volts. So here you can see this is 23 and this is 22. So they are all laid out for you right here. And it is a step-by-step -step process. Just continue down the list testing all of these things. And for this one right here, you're supposed to turn the ignition on to read it. After you read it, you turn it off again and the ignition stays off for all of the rest of these. So I'm just gonna slowly go over them so you can stop the video and come back to this and test all of these for yourself. So you can see that number three is testing the switch for the parking brake. So if that light was not showing up on your dash, this is probably not going to work. So you're gonna stop here and know to fix that. Continuing on to step four, this is gonna test the close button. And this is gonna test the open button so you'll know if they are working. If that does, you can continue on to number six with the convertible top locked with the handle on the top by the windshield. It's gonna test the cowl panel frame micro switch. Then you're gonna test the B pillar micro switch with the top also closed. And then you're going to unlock the top and it's gonna test the micro switch up there that lets it know that it's unlocked. And here is another test with it unlocked. And the next page of this document talks about where these switches are actually located. And the last page has figures showing you where they are. So here's figure A, figure B, figure C, and figure D. I've never used these very much. I own one, but uh, very limited knowledge about them. But what I did learn today is that I want to put this on 20 volts, which I guess is one above the 12 volt battery. And you wanna use the one with the line and the dots underneath it, because that is for DC. The one with the wavy line is for AC. And we are gonna be testing volts. So go to the volt side and your negative is always in calm and your positive for testing for volts is over on the right with the V and the horseshoe or resistance. Now I do use some continuity testing later on and on mine, this little section down here is for continuity so I can just turn it there. When I touch these together or touch them on a wire that actually connects, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's making some noise and giving me some numbers to let me know that there is a connection there. Also, mine came with these little cap things over here on, so I guess it just makes it more precise of where the tip is and can touch, but the tip is not long enough to go into the slots that it needs to to test our relay board, so I had to figure out to pull them off so that it will reach. All right, I got my multimeter here and I got my negative and positive terminals here and I'm gonna go through and start following these directions. So the first one says to connect the negative to terminal 22 and the positive to 23 and it should read what the battery voltage is. So this is how you do that. Come down here. And way over on the right is 22, this is 23. It's tough to do with one hand while I hold the phone, but there you can see it's in there. And it's reading 12 volts, which is what our battery is. And when I let them go, it goes back to zero. So the secret is just to run down this list and it will help you eliminate any switch issues you might be having.
So just for example, the next one says negative to 22 and positive to 26 in the upper left over there. And when I connected them, there was no reading, but then it says switch on ignition. So I switched on the ignition and I got around 12 volts again. So that one is another success. I made it all the way down the list until number eight when it was unlocked with 23 and 13. This did not work. So that leads me to look at the micro switch that is in the release latch mechanism by the front windshield, I guess. So I'm going to disassemble that. Okay, so the micro switch is supposed to be under here somewhere. And these two little eyes need to come off. So I'm just going to take the flat blade. Wow, that was really easy. Just barely touch them and those come off. Now there are two Torx screws under here we got to remove. These are T25s, T25s. Oops, there goes one. And let me try to catch this one this time. All right, number two. Now this piece is loose. And you're supposed to be able to see some wiring to disconnect. Let's see, I see. Yeah, this wire here is just preventing this side from coming down. All right, so now we can rotate it over here and try to see what's going on. So these right here are supposedly have issues with the soldering and they can crack or break a lot. Here's our light. Light still works. And I'm gonna guess this is one of the micro switches. I'm just gonna disconnect this here and this here so I can take this piece down and look at it. Goes into the side right there. So just pull all three of those out and they came out pretty easily. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna break away for a second for some shameless promotions, but I created uh, this shirt. And if you work on your car a lot, you might be interested. I had some interest in these. It's a really nice, comfortable, uh, wicking material for working on the car. So if you're interested, head over to my Instagram page at TT Gator, send me a private message and I'll get you on out. As soon as I have enough people interested to place an order so that they're not prohibitively expensive. Now, if you're watching this years down the road and I've got a ton of subscribers, there's probably a different way to order them, but I can't go back and edit the video. So this is the best I can do for now. If you have some interest, let me know. This is the inside of my unit here. So if you look closely, I guess these are the solder joints that people say could go bad, but it looks fine to me. So the way this little mechanism works here is when you have this locked, that little piece raises up and the plunger pops out. And when you unlock it, the pressure from this plate where my thumb is, is released. And this little plastic arm comes down and you can hear it go click and press that plunger in. It's a little hinge here. I'll do it again from this side so you can see how it works. So I guess sometimes this arm gets kind of deformed and you can apply some heat and reform it so that it will still press the plunger down, but it is still doing its job and pressing the plunger down. So physically it is okay. Now there are three pins in here and I used my um, multimeter to check the continuity of them. And when the latch is in the closed position, when I uh, push it all the way in with my finger and I touch the contact on the left and the one in the center, I get a beep to say that there's a connection there. Uh, when I release it, I can touch all three and I don't get a connection. So 
I was assuming that when I touched the one on the left and the one on the right with it open that I would get something. So maybe that is the problem. I'm not sure. Just wanted to mention while I'm here that I read online that there are actually three micro switches in here. One of them activates the windows that roll down a couple inches when you unlatch this. One of them signals that the latch is actually open and one of them provides power to the relay for the top. So one of my switches is obviously working because the windows go down, but one of the other two is not. According to some more reading that I just did, this one on the left is the one that actually controls the windows going up and down, so that looks fine. And it said that there's one on the right that controls the power to the relay, but I can't really see anything else. They also said that if you use small needle nose pliers and remove these two clips carefully, the clips can be reused if you flatten them back out and you can get this thing off. So I guess I'm going to give that a shot. All right, just gonna try to lift under it. Ah, there we go. Popped it out. It's kind of deformed now, but we'll try to flatten it back. So, all right, we can lift this out now. And there's some of the solder connections they're talking about. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Right here is the switch that they were talking about on the other side. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can see that this arm right here presses that lever down when it is closed and releases it when you open it. And I really do need a magnifying glass to see these, but since I don't have one, I will use my camera's zoom. So I guess these are the points that they say can crack or get corroded, and I can see some brown corrosion around there. It's hard to see inside here for the pins. Magnifying glass would definitely be helpful. All right, now when I'm really zoomed into here, you can definitely see some corrosion. And it's kind of an ugly soldering job. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna take a soldering iron, heat it up, just kind of move it around, try to get the solder up on this corrosion. Actually, I'll probably just I'll get a sharp tool and try to scratch off some of that corrosion first. Maybe just this here. Like that did a good job. All right, just heated up the soldering gun here, and I'm just gonna, gonna touch the joint, heat it up. And I'm also going to go to these solder joints up here, and you can see that there's some corrosion here. So I'm just going to try to draw the solder over the corrosion onto the other side.
All right. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to go back to the continuity test here. Ah, wait. After some experimenting and actually what I did is I noticed that the pins are, uh, there's three pins here, left, center, and right. And there's three pins here, left, center, and right. And here the right one is not connected. Here the left one is not connected. So I actually went back to the connector and when I touch the center one and the right one with it all the way clicked in, I now do get signal that goes all the way through. So let me see, I don't know if I can show you. I have to hold one of these things with my mouth. For one click, two click. If you didn't understand that, that was one click and two clicks. So I think both of these switches are working. But uh, I figured out a cool way to test them. So, so if you set your multimeter to continuity and you touch the left one and the center one at the same time when the first detent is pressed, in other words, when it is releasing this little red stopper, the left one and center one will tell you that it's a continuous connection. If you go all the way to the second click, that is this switch. And you can test the center and the right one for continuity and you will see that that is continuous. So that's how you can test this switch. All right, sorry, I'm learning as I go here. So uh, another continuity test I did was from this end of the strip to this end of the strip and then the same on here just to make sure that this is working correctly. If it's not, that's when you might need to extend your solder out, but it's working for me. And also this center strip is paired with the center pin connected to the center pin. This strip is connected to the pin on the left. So when I'm not pressing that lever down, and that means that your top would normally be open. So when the latch is open, you can actually just touch the two center strips. You should have a flow between those two because they're now connected. Once it's pressed just a little bit and this first one is released, there is no longer any connectivity between these two. And then when it is pressed all the way in and this plunger comes out, there is now connectivity between the center one and the one on the left, the one that does not have a track on top. So if I hold my lead onto this middle one, press it in all the way and touch the left, the multimeter is going off. So that's an easier way to test it and everything is lined up. So like they said, there's supposed to be three micro switches all together. So I can find two of them and test two of them and they seem to be working. Unfortunately, I didn't figure all that stuff out, how to test it before I started messing with the soldering. So did I fix something by doing that? I don't know, but I guess I'm going to reassemble this, put it back in and see if anything has changed. All right, let's turn on our ignition. And all right, windows still work. That's a good sign. Now I tested this already before remembering to put the relay back in, but now the relay is back in. Hey! Hey, we have an operating roof again. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So I guess the problem was in this switch up here. And, uh, whew, man. A little scratched up up there, but... Um, yeah, so the switch was right up here, one of these two sides. So I guess that soldering that I messed around with actually did restore the connection. So the internet is awesome. Helped me figure that out. And hopefully this helped you guys figure out something. Uh, at least I learned a lot about the car today.
Yeah, I was all ready to invest in a new relay. I called Porsche up and it was like 170 bucks, 190 bucks or something like that. And I'd have to wait a couple days for it to get shipped here. Really glad it wasn't that. Ended up being free, fixed it myself. And hopefully these troubleshooting steps will have helped you figure out what was wrong with your top. Or if your top goes bad one day, you'll have this video to come back to and check out lots of different options. So thanks again, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.